Hi, this is Sonia Doucette. In this video, I'll show you how to predict whether a precipitate will form when two solutions containing different compounds are mixed together and how you determine this by calculating the ion product constant, which is abbreviated as IP. The problem we're going to work on is, will a precipitate form when 0 0.250 liters of 0 0.300 molar barium chloride and 0 0.1 liter of 0 0.500 molar sodium sulfate are mixed together. The first thing that it's useful to remember for this type of problem are the solubility guidelines because you'll want to use these guidelines to figure out which ions might form a precipitate of all the ions present. So let's go over the solubility guidelines first. The first guideline has to do with the types of cations that are present when the compounds of interest dissolve. So the first rule is a compound is probably soluble if it contains these cations. Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium. So these are all group 1A cations. And then one more we want to add here is the ammonium cation. So if a compound contains one of these cations, that means it's probably soluble and that means that a precipitate probably won't form. So I keep saying the word probably because it's important to remember that these are merely guidelines. They're not hard and fast rules. What these guidelines tell you will usually happen, but there are exceptions to these guidelines. The second guideline has to do with the anions that are present. So a compound is probably soluble if it contains these anions. And the anions are chloride, bromide, and iodide. And you'll notice that these are all halides, except we're missing fluoride. This is not one of the anions that is usually part of a soluble compound. There's an exception to this case though. If you do have a compound containing one of these anions, but if it contains silver, mercury, or lead, then it is probably not soluble. So I'm going to write except when the compound is containing silver, mercury, and lead. And then the other anions you want to look out for, so if these are part of a compound, again the compound is probably soluble, are all polyatomic anions. So we have nitrate, perchlorate, acetate, and sulfate. And there are exceptions to these four polyatomic anions as well. So except when these anions are forming formed into compounds with the following cations, barium, hydrogen 2 plus, and lead sulfates. So particularly when sulfate is bonded to one of these three cations, then you will probably have something that's insoluble rather than soluble. So those are the general solubility guidelines that you want to use to figure out which specific ions you're dealing with might form a precipitate. So the first thing you want to do, let's going back to the specific problem, 
is to write the balanced solubility equilibria for both substances so that you can figure out which ions you're dealing with. So we have barium chloride. So in a solution, the barium chloride solid is going to dissociate into barium cations and two chloride anions. And then you have your sodium sulfate solid dissociated into two sodium cations and and one one sulfate anion. So those are your two equations. So if we look back at these solubility guidelines, you can see that for compounds that contain chloride, you probably are going to have a compound that is soluble. So what that means in this case is that chloride is not likely to form a precipitate because it's likely to be soluble or part of a compound that is soluble. If you look at sodium, you have the same case. If you look back at the solubility guidelines, sodium containing compounds are also soluble. So sodium is not likely to be part of the precipitate. So you're left with barium and sulfate. So if you look back at the fourth criteria that says compounds are probably soluble if they contain the following anions, you have nitrate, perchlorate, acetate, and sulfate. The exception to soluble compounds is when you have sulfate compounds that contain barium. So that's exactly what we have here. We have barium and we have sulfate. So that in that case, you will have an insoluble compounds. So we can say that a barium sulfate precipitate is likely to form. So the solubility equilibrium that describes this is barium sulfate solid going to barium cations plus the sulfate anion. So there's your solubility equilibria. So to know for sure whether or not a precipitate forms, you have to get quantitative. And you can do this by calculating what's known as the ion product constant, which is abbreviated as ion product or IP. So the ion product constant in this case is equal to the concentration of barium multiplied by the concentration of sulfate. So you can compare IP to KSP to determine if precipitation of barium sulfate will occur. And this is kind of like calculating QC, if you remember doing that, and then comparing that to KC to determine whether a reaction is in equilibrium. So just like in that case, there are three criteria that you can use to determine if precipitation is occurring when you compare IP to KSP. So let me go through those criteria first. So first, if IP is greater than KSP, the solution is supersaturated, and as a result, precipitation will occur. If IP is equal to KSP, this means that the solution is saturated and at equilibrium. So when you have a solution at equilibria, at equilibrium, when you're dealing with solubility equilibria, this means that there's no net precipitation and no net dissolution. And this is because when a solution is saturated or at equilibrium, basically the same thing, then that means the forward reaction rate or the rate of dissolution of a compound is equal to the reverse reaction rate or the re rate of precipitation of that compound. So this is what it means for solubility uh, equilibria to be saturated and in equilibrium. And the third criteria here 
is that if IP is less than KSP, this means that your solution is unsaturated and precipitation will not occur. So there are simply not enough ions in solution for a compound to precipitate because the solution is undersaturated. So those are the criteria. And now I'm going to use this ion product constant expression and then compare that to KSP to determine whether or not precipitation is occurring in our specific case. So in order to calculate IP, we need to find the concentrations of barium and sulfate in moles per liter. So if you go back and look at the original concentrations we were given up at the top here, we know we have 0 0.250 liters of 0 0.30 molar barium chloride and 0 0.100 liters of 0 0.500 0 .00 molar sodium sulfate. So when we mix those two solutions together, which is the case where precipitation may or may not occur, you know, in that new solution, our new volume is 0 0.350 liters. So we have our volume. I'm going to write that down right here. So when we add those solutions together, we have 0 0.250 liters of the barium chloride solution plus 0 0.100 liters of the sodium sulfate solution. So our new solution volume is 0 0.350 liters. So as I already mentioned, we need these concentrations of barium and sulfate to be in moles per liter. So we have the volume part of that moles per liter, but now we need the moles. So we can figure out the moles by looking at the original solutions. So to find the moles of barium, we can take the original volume of the barium chloride solution and multiply by the molarity of that original solution, which is 0 0.300 molar or moles per liter. So liters will cancel and you're left with 0 0.07 five moles of barium. You do the same thing for moles of sulfate. Our original volume for sodium sulfate is 0 0.100 liters. You multiply that by the original molarity, which is 0 0.500 moles per liter. Liters cancel, and you are left with 0 0.05 moles of sulfate. So all you have to do to find the concentrations of barium and of sulfate are to divide those moles both by this new volume, which is 0 0.350 liters. So dividing both of that, those by that volume, you're going to get your concentration. So you have 0.2143 molar barium, and you have 0.14 to 9 molar. So that's your concentration of sulfate and this is your concentration of barium. So now all you have to do is take those concentrations and substitute them back into the IP ion product constant expression. So we have the concentration of barium which we've just determined times the concentration of sulfate and we multiply those together and we get 0.3 sorry 0 0.0306 so we can easily see here what our IP is so the next thing and last thing we need to do is we need to look up an KSP value for barium sulfate. So if you look up the KSP for barium sulfate at 25 degrees Celsius, and let's pretend this whole thing is occurring at um, 25 degrees Celsius, 
you'll get 1.1 times 10 to the negative 10. So we can see here that IP is much greater than KSP. And in that case, according to the three criteria just described, the solution is supersaturated. And that means that precipitation will occur. So we've answered our questions, and we're done.